All right, so yesterday we finished with uh, playing around with the Faker Gem, so I've already got it installed in my gem file, right? In my gem file, I've got the Faker in here. We run the bundle install on that. So we're gonna use that gem. Uh, so to use that in this file, we have to require the uh, Faker Gem, right? And then uh, if we include it as well, then we don't have to keep using this module format uh, like this. We can just say uh, company.bs. So it saves us a little bit of time if we require it and include it at the same time. All right, so uh, we want to create this. So let's, let's say I want to create 100 of them. How would I do a loop that's 100 times? Isn't that nicer? Yeah. All right, so 100 times do, and, and we want to create 100 movies. And uh, let's put this inside of our loop so that we print out the movie each time. So instead of the name of the uh, being hard-coded with a random number here, we can use the faker gym instead. So what could I put in place of this there's a lot of options let's go open up faker look at the docs uh, so the name let's let's use company all right because that'll be the title of our book that's kind of a good company and let's use the BS Okay, company.bs. I don't know what BS stands for, but. <laughs> All right, so let's just create us a, a BS for the name. The director, we can use the actual names, though. We could use something like uh, name, uh, oops. I could use uh, name dot first name plus maybe a space plus name dot well I could just use dot name how about that name dot name so that's the director the description let's put some ipsum in here right so uh, we did some lorem dot paragraphs Uh, lorem dot paragraphs. I need a couple of paragraphs. And remember, what did that return yesterday? Um, an, array. an array of strings, right? So that is an array. I need to convert that into a string. So how can I do that? All right, possibly. I'm going to say dot join, and I'm going to give it something to join on. I'm going to give it a break tag. All right? Wow. Sweet, eh? A year. Now, we can just, there's nothing in the faker to give us a year. I can do a rand, right? So I'm going to do a random of maybe. All right, good. And the length, maybe another random of a minimum of 20 minutes up to 240 minutes, something like that. And the format, uh, what, what formats might we have in our database? Well, let's create an array of strings, and we can use that percent %w uh, beta, uh, VHS, IMAX, HD, Super HD, 4K, DVD, Blu-ray. All right, nice bunch of those. 
Now, how would I select a random one of these elements in my array? You guys should, okay. Not dot rand. Square brackets, okay. Sub. Why would I count them? I know, but what if I added one later on? So formats dot length. <laughs> All right, so that gives me a number between zero and the length, which is just perfect for that, right? Beautiful, eh? So let's do this one time to make sure it works right uh, before we actually run this. And we will run our seed, do the rake db seed again. I'm going to start up my server two while we're waiting. What happened to my seed? I lost it. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> I was trying to be efficient, and I just lost it. So let's go see if it created it. Let's go look, reload our page. Go to probably need a <laughs> proxy for Oh, my god. I swear. Somebody, I'll give extra credit. Somebody writes me a little script that does this for me all the time. Yeah. Seriously, this is driving me nuts. I'll give everybody extra credit. <laughs> all right, and this is all under my, what am I doing? Movies? Okay. So there we go. So I've got uh, one long movie, and then I've got oot, ook, bunch of lipsum, right? See my Briar tag in here? And roll coal. Sees web enabled deliverables. It was built in 1994, 112 minutes, beta. Yeah, you're and then I've got some images that I haven't done. Not working, Dave. Yeah, it is beta. Beta every time, though. That's the first one on the list. That just happened to be the first one in the list. I only did one. I only did one. All right, so let's go fix that. I should, right? So how do we fix that? We need to make that safe. So these paragraphs. All right. Then let's do a few more. Look at that. Beautiful stuff. Lots of random good garbage there. And my format, see? BHH, BHD, IMAX, beautiful. Beautiful. So let's go reload this guy. Now, it's a little slower because I now have, what, 30 or 40 of these guys in here now? That's way slow. Don't tell me it just slipped again. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. As a plug-in? I swear, it's just right at the time that I need it. Every time. Every time. I swear. What the heck? All right, there we go. So now I've got a bunch of them. 
Beautiful, eh? It didn't work, did it? So we'll have to think about that one. My HTML safe did not work. Uh, so where would I fix that if I'm displaying this information? Okay, obviously, I don't want to display all of this movie description on this page, right? It would be fine on this page, on my show page. I want to show everything. That's perfect, right? But on the other page, I want to shorten this. So what's another word for shorten? Truncate. Good. So there happens to be a nice little function called truncate that gives us the, the data we want to truncate and the length we want to give it. And we can give it some options like uh, what do we want at the end of it? Um, we can say a dot, dot, dot at the end for instance, an ellipsis. So let's, let's call this function. Where would I call that in my Rails project? In my index what? What type of file is that? My views, OK? It's a view file. Under movies, uh, in the index. And instead of just pumping out everything here, I'm going to call truncate on that, and we'll give it a length of, say, 20. All right? And I need another, another jobby there, another parenthesis. All right, the other thing I need to do is, as I'm displaying this from the database, uh, I need to uh, make this safe. So here is the better place to put this safe. All right? So I'm going to safe, safetize it and then truncate it. All right? I could do that either way, probably. Probably better to truncate it first and then HTML safe it. There we go. So now we've got a lot smaller guys here with ellipsis meaning there's more information coming. And I click on one of them, and I'm still seeing the entire data. Let's go to one that has a long one. Still see the entire data. So let's fix this guy to have the breaks out. What page is this displayed on? The show page, all right. So if I go to show.html and I list out my description, I can should be able to call .html safe here. Beautiful. Look at that. Isn't that nice? All right, any questions on that that we've done so far? No? Recontextualize. All right, so here's another one. Uh, <laughs> This should be should be capitalized on the words, right? It's a title. So how do we make it something a title? Upcase. Not upcase. Capitalized. capitalized does the first letter. I want every word to be capitalized. So there's a method called titleize. <laughs> All right? Is that, Isn't that nice? That's not in the paper no. Uh, yes, that's in Rails, yes. Look at that. Is that nice? So I would, I would have to do that in both of my places. So instead of doing that all the time here, I can make a method that whenever I call the name, it's going to titleize it automatically. Where do you think I would put that? What is this guy actually doing? It's data, right? It's data from the database. So what's the closest file to my data in the database? The model. All right, so let's go look at the model. And I can create a new method in here called name. 
that returns the name dot titleize. Let's see if that actually works. Titleize. There you go. So now this one here, this name, should automatically be titleized, right? Let's see if that actually works here. So if I go back to my I have a crash. Look at that. You don't even get a nice log on that one. So we got an error um, because it's a it's a circular path, right? So I can't call name to call name. Um, let's call this uh, proper name. All right. And now in the places where I'm going to use this, instead of movie name, I'm going to say movie dot proper name. And in my show case, I'm going to call movie dot proper name. Probably. I'm just showing you one way to do that. So let's reload this guy, and this will work. Yeah, nice. Isn't that better? Undefined method titleize. So Am I, am I spelling it wrong? Yes. Somehow. Really? That doesn't look right either, does it? Titleize, titleize, I guess. All right. Beautiful. So Abrams, Dave, Roll Call, it all. Uh, it's this one here. It's this name here is all titleized. Beautiful, eh? So now I have one place in my in my uh, project that I can change these various properties, right? So I can I can create my own methods just like this is a class. I can create my own methods inside of here to return pieces or concatenation of things together, all kinds of stuff, and it's one place that I would have to change this. All right? Because uh, this is closest to the, the data. This is where our business logic is. So if I, if I had like an address in here or a length in here or something, I could modify that data as it comes to the database or comes from the database. So this is the closest thing to the model, to the data. There's no hard and fast rules. I could put this in a helper instead. But when I'm calling it on a particular field in the database, I, I want to have my methods in that model. All right, any questions on that? Pretty cool. So how might I change my seed file, because I'm not dealing with the uh, image. What, what did I call it? It is called, if I forget, I go to my schema file, remember? Schema. And it's my image and my thumbnail. So I need an image and a thumbnail when I create these guys too. So I need an image. Should go somewhere and my thumbnail should go somewhere. So how might I create information in here that's randomly chosen? I could do an array of images, right? And so that's one way to do it. Uh, another way you might actually go and use the file commands and the directory commands to list all the JPEGs in your in your file here maybe or in your movies file 
and use those uh, in an array to, to loop through. But let's just do it this way. This is easier. Uh, images. And so I might have uh, skis.jpg, uh, except it's going to be in images slash skis.jpg, right? Uh, but that's always going to be the same. So I might do it like this, skis, boots, poles. Yeah, but then it it never changes. That's no fun. That's no fun. So I want to choose a random from zero uh, fr of the length, right? The uh, for the uh, images dot length, and that gives me the the name. But I have to append that to the images. So I might do something like that instead. So I don't have to have slash images up here all the time. And then my thumbnail might be the same thing. All right. So when I recreate these guys, generate some more, it's going to recreate all of these guys. So the other thing I can do is if I'm going to run this again, and I've got old data now, how can I destroy my table completely? So I want to call movie dot uh, destroy all, movie dot destroy all. That goes and basically does a delete star from table, you know, that kind of thing just deletes all of the records from my table. This will create 10 new records, and uh, I'll be all happy. So let's create 100. Now that I actually, let's do one, because <laughs> I just added some stuff. So let's do one one record, make sure that's. I don't, but so they'll, they'll be a broken image. It'll just show a broken, yeah. Yeah. So let's look at our path. Yeah, so our path's coming out correct, so that's okay. So now we can we can create a hundred of these guys. That shouldn't take very long. See? All right. Now some of these came out nil. Why did they come out nil? They repeated it ran into some validation error, right? So it's likely that that repeated itself, right? It's very possible that that repeated itself. So at some point, we ran out, and it, it ran into our validation. And that's why I like to print these out so I can see. I at least got some data. I don't care why they failed. <laughs> So I can reload this guy. Uh, and notice now my thumb image is here. It's just broken because this goes to uh, an image that isn't there. So I'd have to create those images to actually have them work. So we can do that. Uh, but it would be nice. Yeah, true. Uh, so why? So what's wrong with my format? That's good. Good point. What's wrong with my my uh, file over here? Movies. Right. I'm missing movies. Images gets thrown away. Remember? So that should be like this. All right. And let's just uh, call polls. And uh, what was it? Boots. Skis, boots, poles, okay. So let's just run my seeds again. Okay, so I got enough. Should be fine. We'll uh, 
Now, if I try to reload this, why, what will happen? My proxy will fail. <laughs> no, it can't find record 15 because I deleted those. I destroyed all those. And it doesn't reuse these record IDs. So I'd have to go back to my movies, reload this guy. And now I've got all my advertise here's. And my advertise here's. Yay! Beautiful, eh? What? <laughs> All right. So let's talk about this page here and how many I have on here. Right? That's a lot. Look at my scrolling. What is wrong with that in a normal website? I want to limit it to some number on a page, right? Which is what we call pagination. We're going to paginate this list of files. So I'm going to first show you how we might tackle this uh, to give us some more uh, useful information on how the controller and everything works. And let's limit this to only display, let's say, four at a time, or five at a time. Five is probably easier. So where does this list of movies get created in our model view controller system? Yep. How do I go to the database and tell it to give me all of these guys? In the controller, very good. So in the controller, I go to my movies controller. And the index method is where it says, go get me all of the movies. Right? Now, there are a lot of methods that let me limit this without writing SQL. Now, normally I would say select star from movie where, uh, select star from movie limit 10 something like that, right? I'd have a limit command in there. So amazingly enough, this has this capability of a limit. So let's limit it to five. OK? So if I reload my page, I've got five, two, three, four, five. five elements on my page, right? It only gave me five. So my loop in my index ERB file just loops through everything that it got from that database query, right? So all that half changed was that this array of movies was shorter. And my in I didn't have to change anything on my index ERB file. This All this does is loop through them. It doesn't care how many it has in it, right? So I don't have to change anything in my index ERB file. I just have to modify my controller here. All right, so I can do a limit. And there's a lot of other things I can do. So let's go show you uh, the limit as active record query values. There are lots of things I can do. Um, I can group them. I can say having. I can do some joins. I can do some offset and order them by certain fields, just like you would in SQL, right? Order by date or order by ID number or whatever, right? Uh, so the offset, did you ever do try to do pagination through your database in SQL class? You never did that? That seems like a, a must have. So offset tells us how many to, values to skip. So if I wanted to get the second page of something, I would skip the first page, right? So how many are in a page? Well, in my case, I have five. So I'm going to skip five and limit five, and I'll get the second five from the database. Does that make sense? Skip five, get five. I've skipped. Now I'm on the second page rather than the first page. So you can do like the next page? I can. Exactly. 
Exactly right. So I could say limit five, and it doesn't matter what order I put these in. I can say offset by off set by five. I could do offset by five, limit five. The what happens inside of Rails is that they combine all these together at the very end and execute it at the last possible moment, uh, so that I can keep adding stuff to this in programming and just keep adding. And at the very end, when I finally capture that, it does creates one giant SQL command with all this in it and puts it in the right order and figures it out and returns me an array of all of those that I got. Isn't that great? So this value, I, I want to have, uh, maybe that's going to be fixed at 5. The offset is going to be some number, though, right? Incremented by five, so let's call it the uh, page. All right. So, if I had a variable called page, and I multiplied that by five, that would give me the offset, right? Does that make sense? No. No. If there's a second time, it's going to be twenty-five. Yeah. No. No, I haven't stored anything yet. So. How do we pass data between pages? <laughs> um, not no. In in a web browser, forget Rails. Okay. How do we? In the URL, and we call that the the stuff after the question mark is called the oh, query, string. query string. Okay, good. So we pass data in the query string. In PHP, we would get that through the get array, right? Here we get it through what? Remember, you guys just did the calendar. How do we get data? Params. There you go. So, so we say, I want to set this page value to whatever the params of uh, page is. All right. So now I can pass in a page equals one, and a page equals two, and a page equals three, and that three will all always get put times 5, and that should offset it. Does that make sense? So let's just try that. So, yeah, there's a lot more I have to do to it, but I just want to get this. So I can say page equals 1, and I should get, I got nothing. All right, good, nice. So page came in, page was 1, I offset it by 5. Right, yeah, sure. Uh, what is what is page? What type of variable is page? A string, right. So how can I multiply a number times a string times five? Right. So how do I make this not a string? No. <laughs> not do I. <laughs> All right, drag and drop this on the page. There we go. There we go. So now if I change this to page two manually, this optimize should change, right? I got the, the, the second number of these guys. Isn't that great? So to help me in debugging this, and as I'm working through this, I'd like to see the IDs of these indexes. So I'm going to put the ID in a column here, just so I can see them change. Uh, yeah. So it's movie.id. So let's just add that to the beginning. Uh, we'll put a th in here for ID, just so it looks nice. All right, so 95, if I go to page 3, I should have something bigger than that, 100. So it's incrementing by 5 each time, so that's good, right? 100 to 104 is, in fact, 5 values. So I've got part of the equation here. I can go from the page up. Well, if I, if I make this page 0, it's going to start at 0. Zero times five is zero, so it's going to offset by zero, and it give me the first five, right? Yeah, 
So, or if I had nothing here, param sub page is nothing dot two i should be at zero, and it is. All right. So it starts at because I've deleted a bunch of them. Right. I'm at number eighty five. All right. So everybody see what I've done so far. I've added something to the query string. I get that data and I use it in calculations for my query and I get a different value each time. All right? Okay. All right. Um Let's set this to an instance variable, though, so that we can use it in our view, because we're going to need that page to be added to the URL, just like your next and previous calendar months, right? You're going to have to subtract one from it to go backwards and, and forwards, et cetera, right? So now that we have that as an instance variable, we can create a link in our index page, in our index, sorry, index here. And let's, let's just create a, a link to up here. And we want it to say, uh, what, previous? Uh, let's, let's go next first. Next, uh, next. Good enough. And we want that to go to the uh, movie path. And we want to pass in, hmm, it's not the movie path. It's, it's not the movie path. It is movies path, right? Movies path, because that's going to go to the index page. My movies goes to the index page. Movies path. And I want to pass into that path a parameter of page that's going to have the value of page, but not just page, plus one, right? So that should append as a query string to the end of my movies path and create me a nice little link here. I need to end my ERB. Where to go? <sighs> I don't see my link. It's not here. Why? Oh, I know why. Why? There you go. Good job. I was going to see if you guys I did that on purpose. <laughs> Speaking of quizzes, we should have another one here soon. So this next now says page three. I was on page two. The next should set page to three. It gives me the next one. Look at that. Is that sweet? Bada boom, bada bing. Nice. Now, how would I make a previous? Exact opposite of this, right? <laughs> so we're going to put that above it. Uh, we'll put some NBSPs in here. And this is going to be called previous. And this is going to be minus one, right? You think so? And if? Really? So now I've got next goes to page 9, previous goes to page 7. I'm on page 8, so which is perfect. Previous, 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 and it doesn't crash. Because the offset can't go negative. So it doesn't, it just, it just pegs it here, which is not good for my URL, right? But it's it's there. Probably 
just runs out. It offsets. <laughs> My computer's running out of. So there we go. Which is not good either. My number keeps going up. So I should peg those values, right? You can peg those. And where would be a good place to peg those? Probably in the controller. <laughs> so I might, instead of doing this, I might do my math inside of here and create variables like uh, previous page and next page and use those instead. So my previous page is going to be uh, at page minus 1 unless uh, at page equals 0. And my next page is going to be at page plus 1 unless uh, at page, I know, you, yeah, it would be times 5 is less than movie dot count, maybe something like that. That would probably work. We'll see if that works. That sounds good. Uh, <laughs> and so over here, I don't do the math anymore. I just use uh, previous page and next page, and let's see if that works. I got to get back underneath. There we go. So here I'm at the end of it. If I go up, uh, it stops. I can't. Oh, that that didn't work. No, it went back to zero. It went back to zero. Previous doesn't work. So I've got a problem with my logic here, obviously. Yeah, it's close. It's close. I just have to look, think about it a little more. But. Um, It was it was working uh, when I had a, a positive value. At my previous works, I think, right? Goes down to one, goes to zero, goes to zero, and then it stops. Okay, so that's okay. My next doesn't work. Um, Probably. So, so my next doesn't work. So this is the only one that doesn't work. So, because page is only going to be one times something, right? Because we're offsetting. No, because my movie count is going to be. I don't think so. I don't think that'll make any difference. Possibly not. Um, uh, let's just say length. I don't know. I get confused on my languages. Let's just see if that fixes it. Oh, much better. Undefined method length. Uh, what's the other one? Is size. So it liked that. Oh, there we go. It should be greater than. Undefined no. <laughs> method size. You're gonna be kidding me. <laughs> All right. Guaranteed to work this time. There we go. Shazam! Isn't that great? <laughs> That's all right. Shazam! All right. So that, that gives you an idea how you might do this with uh, manual 
programming, right? But there's a gem for this. And there's a, actually a couple of gems for this. So we're going to use a gem for this tomorrow, and I'll show you how to use that gem, uh, which is pretty nice. It gives it more of a of a look like uh, like Google's site when you search for something. And you've got pages that you can click through. I can go all you want to go to the eighth page. See, ASDF is is what we got. 15 million versions of ASDF. <laughs> oh, you're kidding. All right, so that's enough for today. Any questions?